Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Greetings to everyone um, in your various homes. Uh, it's a delight to get a chance to talk to you about uh, one of the most important subjects uh, human beings can ever embark on. You see, um, as a race living on earth, we are doomed. So what do I mean by that? We are in a situation where you would find um, people are even starting companies to find us another home. They can see that this planet, look at it, um, with global warming and things like that, is actually deteriorating. They can see that everything that we are going through uh, seems to be spelling that um, the end of humanity or the end of life on Earth as it were. So it's just a question of time, but when will that be? So um, out of that fright, you would find people have uh, started companies to build uh, spaceships to take us to other planets. So the nearest that people have started um, looking at is actually Mars. So um, why are people that afraid? Well, it appears we shouldn't be, or at least we need to be careful, but not to be as afraid as we are. So uh, it is with that in mind that we would like to discuss the first topic uh, that we're going to discuss today. And it is the following. About 2000 years ago, in a small place, somewhere outside the town of um, Bethlehem, in some district called Judea, was born a man in a manger. So what happened then? So the parents went there for a census, and as they were there, the, the virgin mother went into labor. And um, as she went into labor, what did, she, what did she bring forth? So John tells us whom she brought forth. This is John the beloved, John the disciple. So what does he say? In the beginning, in John 1 verse 1, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Let's pause for a moment and think about that. Excuse me. So there is a time setting here. The time setting is the following, the beginning. So the Bible, or rather John, takes us right to the beginning. He, refer, he uses the same terminology that is used by Moses in writing the book of Genesis. So in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, he says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. But he starts by saying, in the beginning. Could this be the same beginning that John is talking about here? The time of creation? I would submit yes, and even beyond that. So, in the beginning was the Word. So, we have something which was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. I find this to be very profound. So you have a word which was with God in the beginning. Hmm. So in verse 2, he continues to say, the same was in the beginning with God. So this is the person that we want to talk about. This word which was in the beginning with God. And um, he continues to say in verse 3, all things were made by him and without him, was not anything made which was made. Without him was not anything made which was made. In Revelation chapter 3, verse 4, just to um, touch base there, so it's the same author, um, so it's the same author, uh, verse 14 rather, so it's the same author, uh, writing about the same person. What does he say? And unto the angel 
of the Church of, Laod of the Laodiceans write, These things say the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. Friends, there are many different theories that, have come up, that people have, um, have invented lately. And some of them are even making their ways uh, into the church. But this book, this book, the Holy Bible, is a book to be recommended. And it tells us, and a book to be studied, it tells us of history. And in that history it tells us that in the beginning, when creation was going on, there was this one person um, who was there in the beginning. He was with God and he was God. So he was the faithful and true witness. Uh, chapter 3 of Revelation, uh, verse 14 again. So is the true, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. In John chapter 1, he says, without him was not anything made that was made. So this is the weird part. So in six days he created. How did he create? Through the word. So he would speak things into existence. So God decided, he wanted, he saw that there was darkness, so he decided, let me create light on the very first day when he was creating time. So what does he do? He says, let there be light. He was speaking light into existence, and there was light. So in the beginning, he said, let there be light, and there was light. So he was speaking light into existence. Now, when you look at it carefully, so God speaks, and it seems the word that he speaks creates. So the word that he speaks is creative power. John is telling us that that word is, is Christ. It is the word that was with God, it is the word that was, that was God. So, in the midst of all the confusion that um, uh, people go through, I recommend this book because of its truthfulness. In Matthew chapter 22, the word is talking to, um, so in Matthew chapter 22, verses 41 and 46, right at the end of the, uh, of the chapter. So this word is talking, to, uh, is talking to the Pharisees uh, of the day, 2,000 years ago. So while the Pharisees gathered together, Jesus asked them, What think ye of Christ in particular? Whose son is he? Uh, they said unto him, the son of David. Then he's like, if he's the son of David, why then does David call him uh, in spirit? Uh, speak, speaking in spirit, why then does David call him Lord? Because he, he says, verse 44, that the Lord said uh, unto my Lord. So David called this man, uh, uh, whom we call Jesus, the Lord. So he was greater than um, uh, than David. Now, uh, this is made very clear uh, in a passage uh, of scripture in um, Isaiah chapter 11. So in Isaiah chapter 11 verse 1, we read of the branch from Jesse. Jesse is the father of um, David. So, um, and, and Jesus came from the lineage of David, by the way. So he says, and they shall come forth a rod, this is Isaiah speaking, and they shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse. So in other words, he have a stem, and this stem is called Jesse, that's the father of David, and out of that stem comes forth a rod, okay? So whether he's making a rod out of that stem, or there's a rod branching out uh, out of that stem, we are not sure. Uh, in, okay, let me be careful. I'm not sure, but uh, what we know, or what uh, uh, Isaiah tells us is that out of this stem of Jesse, so shall come forth um, a, a, a rod, and 
a branch shall grow out of his roots. So when you have come across, so you, you'd come across these trees, particularly on the mountain on which they grow. So if you visit uh, Israel, particular in particular Jerusalem, and uh, you visit the uh, eastern uh, mountain, the Mount of Olives, you find a number of trees uh, there and they are olive trees. Now, you, as you begin to go up the mountain uh, from the valley, as you begin to go up, there is a garden there. So it's a garden of olives, uh, which is known as Getsemane. Getsemane actually means the garden of olives. So uh, it is in that garden of olives uh, that you'd find the eight olive trees that were there the night when Jesus, or should I say that were believed to be there the night when Jesus was praying the night when he got um, uh, when he got arrested in that garden. So, what did these trees do? So you remember that um, when he went in, he took three of his uh, beloved disciples, and then he left them in some place, and then he went a stone's throw away. So you could throw a stone, and that distance in which, over which you could throw the stone, the stone would land. That's, that's how far he went. He departed from the disciples. And as he was there, he started, um, he started praying the famous, uh, the famous prayer. If it were possible, may this cup pass from me. That, that's a wholly packed uh, subject on its own. He was facing the cross. He was facing... Uh, the guilt of all humanity, the guilt of you and I, at that very moment when he prayed that prayer. Okay, fine. So what does he do? He goes there, he prays for an hour. It is after an hour, he comes back, he finds the disciples sleeping. So throughout the journey uh, that Jesus uh, walked on the um, on, on, on this planet, particularly in Israel, uh, over the three and a half years of his mission, he was praying for others. But on this particular night, this fateful evening, he really longed for his beloved friends who would understand him more than everyone else to pray for him. These are the pe same people that he asked, whom do people say I am and whom do you say I am? These are the people who answered correctly that you are the son of God. So these are the people who understood Jesus to be the son of God, the very lamb a sacrificial lamb that was promised um, when Adam and Eve sinned. So, this is the same lamb that people have been looking forward to over many generations. Now, the question is, as he was in there, he expected these people to understand what he was going through, or at least to stay awake with him while he was praying just but for an hour. If he had seen them praying the moment he came back, he would have been uh, refreshed. But then he comes, and what does he see? He finds them sleeping, and uh, in a bit to excuse them, what does he say? The flesh is weak, even though the spirit, even though the spirit is willing. So, uh, he got to a point, when you read from the book, uh, The Desire of Ages, which I think is the best account of Jesus' life outside the Bible itself, you would find that, uh, what did Jesus do? He prayed in that, uh, in that Gethsemane, and when he found them sleeping, it appeared only nature was with him. So the olive trees, as they were dripping, um, uh, because it was a cold night, so as they were dripping uh, those droplets of water on, onto him, that too. Uh, in the book, The Desire of Ages, the prophetess says, uh, it appeared nature was sympathizing with him. So which trees are those? It is these olive trees. So it is these olive trees from which, uh, uh, okay, so it is, it is these olive trees uh, that you'd find in that garden of Gethsemane. Now, um, let's conclude at this point. So when you get into the garden of Gethsemane, you will find that there are these eight olive trees that were there, or rather believed to be there when Jesus, when Jesus prayed in there. Now, you'd ask, why are they not dead? Because they shoot from the root. So other, other trees would, um, would stem, would get, um, would, so if the tree dies, you'd get, they would shoot from the stem. But with these olive trees, they would shoot from the root. So in, uh, in Isaiah chapter 1, verse 11, he says, and they shall, as I say, and they shall come forth 
a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow not from the stem, but from the roots. So we'll pick it up from here because this branch is actually the Christ that we are studying about. So uh, in the next session, we'll continue with this subject and then uh, we'll get a bit deeper uh, as, we, uh, as we try to understand uh, this man, this loving man whom we all want to be like, even the man Jesus. Amen.